My sincere thanks to um, Kamini Madam. And thank you. I have been looking for you since morning, but you have been very busy. Yes, I just saw you. So my pranams to you. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, I have to like make a fight with Rajiv. I'm sorry about that, Rajiv. <laughs> um, yes, my, my, my topic is, is AFC a more versatile marker for ovarian reserve? We all know that it is a, a pool of primordial follicles which develop into preantral and then into antral follicles. And it is these antral follicles which are first seen, I mean, these are the first structures that can be seen on ultrasound. Uh, we see several of them and um, actually they compete to uh, with each other to become dominant and then um, uh, of course uh, ovulate, mature and uh, they ovulate. Of course in natural cycle we know that the total number actually doesn't matter much because we need only one or two follicles to mature. Uh, but in the stimulated cycles, we want multiple follicles and that's where it matters how many follicles are there in the pool. Um, it is this number of follicles which will decide how many follicles will mature on your stimulation. That means the number of antral follicles is the reserve and it tells you, I mean, it is, it is a representative of the, the number of follicles that will develop. This has been proved by several studies. We have since long many years, there have been several studies on EFCs and this is a very old study which says that yes, if the number of antral follicles is less, then the chances of cancellation of cycle is pretty high as compared to when the number of antral follicles are more, the cancellation of cycle is pretty less, then that is because of the poor response. This is about IVF cycles. So if the number of follicles that have been mature, I mean that have developed are less, you have to cancel the cycle considering it as a poor response. When you're doing IVF, it has also been shown that the number of antral follicles correlates well with the number of oocytes retrieved. And a multivariate analysis has confirmed that AFC represents the most useful ovarian response marker to the uh, con controlled ovarian stimulation in all study groups as the number of mature oocytes retrieved increased with the increasing AFC. Another study says that it is the number of antral follicles is a clinical endpoint of the oocytes produced or peak E2 concentrations. And of course, if you can calculate the number of antral follicles with 3D and the inversion mode, a more precise calculation which says that the number of antral follicles that you have counted, 60% of those follicles will develop into mature follicles and that will be your oocyte yield. But we also know that the number of antral follicles can be correlated to the age because there is a definite decline in the number of the antral follicles. In one study, according to one study, it's 3.8 and that starts from as early as about 25 years of, of the female age. It increases. We know that the rate of atresia is accelerated as the age advances reaches 4.8% and even after 37 years it's even as high as 11.7%. We know that along with decrease in the AFC there is also a decrease in AMH so in that matter probably both are e almost um, go hand in hand they're both both almost equally accurate. Of course, we have studies where AFC also can predict menopause, but uh, AMH can predict menopause, but AFC also can be a predictor of menopause. It can tell you how much of the reproductive lifespan is still, still saved, I mean, it's still there. Therefore, the enteral follicle count is believed to represent the quantitative aspect of the ovarian aging. And again, like you would not do repetitive exam, uh, assessment of the AF, AMH, you would also not ideally do repetitive assessment of the AFCs. But even if you do, there is only a limited intercycle variability. 
AFC, ovarian volume and even the power Doppler indices do not significantly change after down regulation. That means whether it is a down regulated cycle or a non down regulated cycle and the down regulation can be with agonist, can be with occipitals, anything. The number of enteral follicles will still remain consistent and you can still use them as a parameter of the ovarian reserve. For the same patient waiting for the cycle with a higher AFC, this is especially in a case where the patients are low reserve. The higher AFC does not improve the ovarian stimulation response to the oocytes retrieved compared with the cycles in the same patient with lower AFC. Actually, the lowest count is important and that is to be taken as the most important parameter. Though low AFC in young women who are infertile but ovulatory may not indicate a poor ovarian reserve. Age, therefore, when combined with AFC may be a best predictor for the ovarian reserve and the response. But lower AFC was observed in infertile women as compared to the controls which may suggest that it's not only the quantity, it's also the quality of the oocytes which might be bad in or lower in the patients who have a lower AFC. Of course, this needs to be proved still. So that is what AFC can do. But there are a lot more other ovarian reserve tests as Dr. Rajiv has talked a lot about AMH, but we know that we would use H, we would use, I um, mean, we have been using for years together FSH, and inhibin is also a new marker. So can, and, and of course, there are a lot more other uh, dynamic tests like um, the CC challenge and uh, effort and so on. So we need to compare AFC with those tests. The number of small enteral follicles two to six millimeters is significantly related to the age and also independent of age to all the endocrine ovarian reserve tests suggesting the number of small enteral follicles represent the functional ovarian reserve. If you consider age, the age, the ovarian volume, FSH and inhibin B are each significantly associated with the enteral follicle count. Another study again on the age is more strongly related to the follicle count than all the other tests, which is FSH, inhibin B, or, in, uh, or estradiol. Uh, it is a better marker than FSH. We all know that. We have all uh, a complete agreement on the same. Coming to its comparison with AMH, the number of small enteral follicles, two to six millimeters, is the actual functional reserve. It, re it number remains constant throughout the cycle. This is what many of us may probably not be knowing that you can count the number of enteral follicles between when I call the enteral follicles two to six millimeters at any phase of the cycle. They are almost con constant except in the late luteal phase. And that is when we know that even the AMH values are less. We know that the 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 thresholds for the AMH are different in the rest of the cycle and in the late uteal phase, and that can be correlated with the, uh, with the AFCs, which uh, there's an atresia of the follicles in that stage. The relationship of AMH when was compared with other markers of the ovarian reserve and AFC, it was concluded that serum AMH was more robustly correlated with a number of AFC than inhibin B, E2, FSH, and LH on day three. AFC is considered to be the best discriminating potential for a poor ovarian response compared to the total ovarian volume and the basal serum labels of AFSH, and again, all of them. The enteral follicle count provides better prognostic information on the occurrence of the poor response during hormone stimulation for IVF than does the patient's chronological age and the currently used endocrine markers. And a metal analysis has also shown that AMH has at least the same level of accuracy and clinical value for the prediction of the poor response and non-pregnancy as AFC. That means the AFC has been considered even a little superior to match for the poor assessment of the poor response. 
and still one more study which says for the prediction of the poor ovarian response a model including AFC plus AMH was found to be almost similar to that of using AFC alone. Coming to the hyper response. AFC is also used to predict the hyper response and thus using safe and successful stimulation regimes and to prevent the, the OHSS. Both AFC and AMH are accurate predictors of excessive response to the ovarian hyperstimulation. The sensitivity and specificity for the prediction of high ovarian response were 89% and 92% for small antral follicle count and 93% and 78% for the AMH. That means here the sensitivity is a little better for AMH and the specificity is a little better for AFC. And we have also done one study wherein we compared the accuracy of AFC and AMH with the two groups, the normal group and the PCO. We compared, uh, I mean, we, we correlated it with the number of follicles more than 12 millimeter on the day of HCG and of course with the number of oocytes retrieved. And both in both the groups, both uh, proved to be almost equally accurate. So AMH and AFC are basal markers found to predict ovarian response, both poor and hyper, with a high sensitivity and specificity and are comparable in this regard. So we, we are not going to fight over that. In some special cases like PCO and endometriosis, according to a study, AMH does not appear to be helpful for sub all subjects with PCOS, but may be of some value in those who are anovulatory. However, AFC, was highly sensitive in all phenotypes and was the single best criterion assessed for all subjects suggesting the important role of ultrasound. Why was that said? Because in the classic anovulatory PCOS patients, AMH exhibited a sensitivity of 91% and the FNPO, which is again AFC, so it is, AFC is in both the ovaries together, FNPO is follicle number in one ovary. So FNPO uh, had a sensitivity of 92%. Whereas in the ovulatory phenotype, AMH sensitivity was only 50%, whereas for the FNPO it was 95%. In the non-hyperandrogenic type, AMH 53%, FNPO 93%. And if you take the entire cohort, that means all phenotypes, even then AMH had a sensitivity of 79% as compared to the enteral follicles, 93%. The number of, in, the, in endometriosis, of course, the number of mature oocytes retrieved in the women with and without the endometriosis was best predicted by the enteral follicle count and age, whereas only AFC was a predictor in the women with previous endometrioma surgery which had a better predictive value of number of oocytes retrieved. This means even in the endometriotic group, the best predictor for the controlled ovarian stimulation response in, uh, uh, was probably AFC. But we still have close values. So even if we consider both almost equal, so what are the other things left? Ease and the cost. That means ease to do it and cost. Of course, Dr. Rajiv had told us several times, it's so easy to learn because we are not doing it. It's the lab who is doing it. But anyway, this is what we are doing it. And I would say I prefer or I rely most on me, not on the lab. Uh, so so um, considering the ease of doing it, you can do it with two Ds. Just scroll across, eyeball and count, and that is as reliable as the 3Ds, as proved in the studies, except when it is a very high count, wherein 3Ds may be required for the correct count. AMH and AFC, the comparison has already been done by Dr. Raji. I'll probably omit that slide. There is a little bit of overlap over there. Uh, but there's a linear correlation seen between the AFC and AMH. Though AMH is a new coming up marker uh, for the ovarian reserve, the close correlation between AMH and AFC suggests that they will not offer mutually exclusive information and AFC and AMH alone or in combination have a similar predictive power. Combination of both the tests do not significantly increase the predictive power. Even more, 
AFC had a highest accuracy for predicting ovarian response in the patient with abnormal ovarian reserve test and was statistically significant than AMH and FSH in predicting the ovarian value. Actually, AFC and the ovarian volume are the direct measurements of ovarian reserve, while AMH Inhibin B and estradiol are released from the growing follicles and so their labels reflect the size of the developing follicle cohort. FSH is controlled by the negative feedback of the inhibin B and so high FSH presents a small cohort size. That means all the hormonal parameters are indirect measurement of the ovarian reserve whereas AFC is the direct measurement. A study indicates that AFC is most useful marker in the predictive in predicting the ovarian response, doing AFC assessment alone would be more cost effective for predicting the ovarian response in the patients undergoing COS. And to conclude, therefore, AFC and AMH are equally reliable for assessment of the ovarian reserve, so no fight between us. And AFC is accurate in predicting hyper response or poor response. It is more reliable than AMH in the patients with PCOS and endometriosis. It has minimal intracycle and intracycle variability. It is cost effective, so I leave it to you to decide which you want to use. If you're good at ultrasound, AFC is an accurate and a sufficient marker for the wear and reserve. But if you have to rely on somebody else, maybe you will select AMH. Thank you very much.